Folks, you've heard me talk about Jason Pritchard being the uh, best of the best in my market. I think we should go back to interview number four on this channel. Yes, we are going way back in the way back machine and bringing you Jason Pritchard and his origin story. <laughs> Hey everyone, how you doing today? So uh, bringing to you a, a really exciting interview, one I've been looking forward to uh, actually with uh, Jason Pritchard. How you doing today, Jason? I'm doing great, Michael. Thanks for having me on. How are you, sir? I'm doing really well. One of the reasons I wanted to, to get Jason on, on these interviews is because he is, he's one of those individuals that knows that the more you share, uh, the more goodness comes back. He runs a, right. uh, uh, an education event up in Fresno and he's nice enough to have me out uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, and I'm like, okay, Gonna have to get some payback and have you come do an interview with me. So, uh, right. Jason, why don't you just sort of introduce yourself, what, who you are, what you do, and all of that, and we'll get started. Sure, sure. So, again, my name is Jason Pritchard. I've been a full-time real estate investor since late 2014. So, we're we're coming up on kind of my four-year anniversary. Um, before that, I, I worked all corporate jobs. I was in sales and management, and I did that all through uh, college. After I graduated college, uh, for like 13 or 14 years. And then I hit a kind of a transitional point in my life and I felt like, you know, it was time to do something different. I kind of got burnt out uh, trying to climb the corporate ladder and uh, I turned to real estate and uh, haven't turned back. It's been a great. Very cool. Well, let's, let's jump right in. So I always like to start with, you know, so the audience can really get a feel for who you are. So tell us what you're doing now. What's your business look like now? You know, no specific numbers, but just, you know, what are the categories and, and what are the things that are doing to keep you busy today? Sure, sure. So um, what I'm doing now is uh, trying to take um, more of a, I, I don't know if entrepreneurial approach is the right word, but, uh, you know, trying to keep my doors open as far as real estate deals. When I first started, I was wanting to fix and flip everything. And I think I kind of uh, painted myself in a corner with the exit strategy. And I just thought that, you know, this is the way that you make the most money. And that was one of my goals was just try to exit and, and, and maximize the deals because I didn't have a lot of things kind of, you know, happening at the beginning, which is kind of normal for when you first get started. Um, and then as I've transitioned, I've gotten a chance to connect with some, uh, some other investors that have, uh, you know, mentored me or schooled me a little bit. And I really transitioned more towards uh, trying to buy and hold properties. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, now the, the properties that I am, you know, either wholesaling or wholesaling and flipping, I'm using that money to reinvest back and uh, add to my, my rental portfolio. So that's really my, my goal right now. So your, this, I, this is so important. So your goal to use that word is long-term wealth. And for you, that is your buy and hoard portfolio that you're building. Um, as that's correct. That's correct. So I, I look at the rental portfolio as kind of a hedge against, uh, you know, everything that's kind of happening. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. want to have to make decisions in my life based off of, you know, I need to do this because I have to pay bills or financially I have to do this. Right. And so, um, you know, you hit it on the head. The wealth accumulation is a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, I want to be able to pass something down to my, to my kids and my family when I'm done. Yeah. Um, I want to be able to make decisions based off of um, what makes me happy and not just because, you know, I have to do this because it's a job, which I did for a really long time. Right. And um, I've just found that, you know, flipping houses is a job, you know, oh. don't let anybody fool you. It's, Amen. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of work. And so um, I still do it and I still like it. And I really like, you know, taking, you know, really distressed properties and turning them around and handing them over to a new family. I, I still yeah. enjoy that piece of it. But um, you know, as I've, held on to more of the properties. I've definitely seen the value and in, uh, in that monthly cash flow and uh, yeah. you know, all the different benefits that you get with, uh, with having a large rental portfolio. That's awesome, Jason. Don't let me put words in your mouth, but I think what you're telling, I want the audience to take away from your statement is you've, you've moved from a, I got to make as much money as possible. Flipping is the answer to a, you know, through uh, experience and mentorship and all of that into, you know what, I have to set up a process where, my daily activities or weekly activities can spin off chunks of cash that allow you to use that to build your rental portfolio or your. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a great way to put it. I feel like, um, you know, I, I've traded time for money for a, a very large portion of my life. And, yeah. you know, even at, 
you know, if you're making four or 500 bucks an hour, you know what I mean? You've also only so many hours in a day that you can do that. Yeah, exactly. And so what I'm really focused on right now is, uh, is, a, is trying to establish processes and, and, and duplicate myself. Really. I want to kind of take myself out of the, out of the equation and find people like me that can kind of do what I'm doing and download the skill sets that I have into them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, really get into kind of an aggressive, uh, you know, growth period when it comes to uh, just all of my real estate businesses. Yeah, that's one thing. I, I think we should touch on this before we go into the next section. One thing I've seen you do really well, um, you use the word, so I'll use it, sort of mentorship of, of creating or that duplication of yourself. I met a couple of, of your team members and uh, you actually just had a Facebook post in a video of a, a gentleman who used to be a barista. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. now been a part of $2 million in, in transactions. Uh, why do you sort of tell that story? Because that that feeds a part of you that's not your checkbook, right? That 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 has to feel good. So why don't you talk about that? Give him a shout out uh, and then we'll go on to the next section. Yeah, so I think one of the things that I actually did really enjoy from my prior experience in, in corporate America was seeing other people grow, right? Mm -hmm. And, and um, developing and cultivating talent building a team, yeah. building an environment where people really like to come into work. Right. And so, um, you know, I think I've taken that with me and just applied it towards my real estate business. I still really like doing that. I like to see other people be successful. And, um, I've, I've just been, it's been proven to me over and over again that that, the, the time and the effort and energy that you invest into those people, it always comes back full circle. It's maybe not monetary, but you know, right. whatever it is, it always comes back to you. And I feel like, um, you know, that's just something that makes me feel good. And, and seeing a, a kid like Scott yeah. um, be successful, yeah. um, you know, it, he reminds me a lot of me when I was young. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, I've had people that have helped me kind of, you know, as I've, as I've come up. And so, you know, I'm just trying to pay that forward. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, the little bit I know of Scott, uh, connected with him, spoke with him a little bit at the event. I see a little bit of myself and I'm like, wow, if I had started at his age. Yeah. Just, that's what wow. I tell him all the time. Yeah. I say <laughs> your unfair advantage is your age, man. You're 20. And I said, God, if I had started when I was 20, I mean, who knows, you know? And so it's, it's trying to, you know, I think that type of stuff is lacking in society right now. Like we're not learning these things in school, oh, yeah. unfortunately, even in our homes and our families. And it's not, you know, discredit to my parents or anybody, but you know, we just weren't taught some of the things that, yeah. you know, we kind of have to figure out as we go along. And, um, you know, it's, it's those kind of relationships that helped really with the momentum and the trajectory that my life and career is on now is, oh. is what's helped me. And so, you know, I'm trying to, you know, help other people too. As I, as yeah, I, I, you, know, of, you know, you brought something up. I just feel like I have to put out here and, um, at least in my family, I won't say yours, I'll say mine, uh, your, how good you were at your job was based on the income you made, right? How much money did you make? Did you make? 50 grand a year, 100 grand a year, 200 grand a year, half a million. I mean, whatever that, the bigger the number was, the better you were. That's what, that was what was believed in my household. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the, uh, that's the, um, you know, I love my, obviously my, but dad's probably going to watch this. I love my dad and <laughs> my family. And there's so many things that so many great things that, that you've been taught. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think just for me, I've always been kind of an entrepreneur at heart. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, you just don't learn those skill sets, right? You don't no. learn about how to run and operate a business. And, you know, you don't even when in college, I went to college and, and I got a business management degree and, and, you know, I just did none of the stuff that I did in school or things that I'm applying towards my business now. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just, uh, you know, get yourself around the right people, forming those relationships. And, uh, you know, those are the things that I feel like are going to open the doors that, that, uh, that yeah, you need to be open for. Yeah. The last thing I'll say on this and we can move on is, is, uh, I don't know what else to call it, but the rat race, right? Yeah. I know lots of people here in the Silicon Valley that make, let's just say more than 200 grand a year, but unfortunately they have allowed that income to, um, you know, allow them to raise their expenses. So when you sort of net out what they have, they're living paycheck to paycheck, right? I believe yeah. we are going to go into a soft economy. I believe a recession is coming. Uh, you know, the, the yield curve just went negative and all of these yeah, things are saying it's coming. Yeah. And I'm afraid some people, if they don't ratchet back expenses dramatically, are going to be in trouble. I lived through the 08 investing crisis and came out clean and happy. But 
I saw so many people suffer. It hurt me, right? I'm a, I'm a feeler, right? I put on a hard shell and blah, blah, blah. But if you, you know me well, I, I feel when people are in pain and um, I don't want to go through that again. That was just horrible. So. Yeah. 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 And that's, again, going back to the, the point that I was making, I don't, I, one of the things that really in, excites me so much, there's a lot of stuff that it, like, excites me about owning rental properties, but it's just not having that income come in. Yeah. Um, it's not passive, but you know, it's not completely passive. Right. But yeah. you know, having that income come in and, and having a vehicle like that, where, you know, you have your tenants paying down your mortgage, you get the bonus with appreciation, you get all these different things with tax deductions and different things like that. It's just, you know, a hedge against, you know, a lot of things, the bad things that can happen with the economy and the stock market. And yeah. stuff like it, that. So, so, yeah, it's great. so how long ago did you have zero rentals? Is it months? Years? Uh, just over two years ago. So I started uh, June, June of 2016 is when I purchased my first, first rental, rental property. And then you have yep. just, we'll just put a pin in this section. How many do you have as of today? Was it 24? Uh, 24. Yeah. I opened escrow. I've, I officially own 23 opened escrow on number 24 yesterday and we're set to close that one before the end of the year. So my goal yeah. at the beginning of this year was to get to 25. I had nine uh, as of January of 2018. So that was a goal that I've kind of yeah. set for myself and we're right there. So, um, well, you know, you, over you my good body, we're, so we're buying one more. Yeah. That's, it's <laughs> happening no matter what. Man. Good for yeah. you. Good for you. So, uh, yeah. so let's put a pin in this now. Let, let's make a connection. You know, let's rewind the clock before you were in real estate in 2014, sure. like I noted. Why don't you set up who you were, what you were doing? You've already said corporate America, but why don't you paint the picture yeah. what, what you were doing and, and how you got Yeah, your and I think that's important. I think uh, for me, and one of the things that's helped me so much is that I came from a sales background before I ever got into real estate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a struggle for a lot of the people that want to get into real estate initially. Um, and they come from maybe, you know, uh, a, a regular job where they're not interacting with people on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. And real estate is very much a people business. Mm -hmm. Um, what I was doing initially was, uh, I was doing, consulting for a technology company. So we we're doing outside sales, strictly business to business stuff. Uh, we were selling, you know, computers and servers and different technology packages to no, small no. and medium businesses, yeah. um, opened up, uh, a department a sales department started me with one, me and one other guy. And at the end of like six years, it was me and 26 people that I was managing. And we had satellite locations and we grew that department um, uh, and grew the team up. Um, and I was making a lot of money. I was young and I was making a lot of money, which was good. And I was also spending a lot of money, which was not good. And I was being very irresponsible and buying all the toys and all the different things. Oh, I and, uh, you do that when you're like 23 and 24, I think, you know, you do that. And, you know, I didn't really know any better. And I thought that that ride was going to go forever. Yep. And then that company went out of business. And um, I ended up transitioning to another sales job and I did that for another seven, six or seven years. And again, I, tr I found myself in a routine where I was doing the same thing. I was trying to climb the ladder, yeah. trying to, you know, get up in management and do that thing. And, and um, you know, I just didn't like what I was doing. My heart wasn't in it. I didn't like or respect a lot of the people that I was working with. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew just that this wasn't for me for the long term, right? And I yeah. just, uh, you know, there were just times towards the end of both of those jobs where I just didn't want to go into work. I hated what I was doing. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just knew that there was something more. And so I, I got to this transitional period in my life. And I decided, you know, I had a little bit of dough saved up. Um, I talked with my wife and, uh, you know, we made the decision to just try it and see what happened. And I realized like, you know, worst case scenario, I could always go back to this other stuff that I was doing. And, um, you know, we did one and then we did another one and then we did, you know, you know, another one after that. And, mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, real quick, just, just real quick, just real quick. You said you did one and then another one. I want to be very clear. I'm guessing sure. they were flips. Yeah. So I was naive enough to think that um, when you first got started, you could just dial up like a foreclosure, like on realtor.com <laughs> and buy it cheap and then fix it and make some money and then just do it over just like on TV, literally. Yeah. My, all of my experience from real estate was on TV. I knew nothing about real estate beyond just like buying and selling my own house. I didn't know. Yeah what a title company did. I didn't know anything. And right. so I found out very quickly that that didn't work and that, you know, you had to start trying to figure out how to get these things at a, at a deeper discount. Yep. Um, I ended up working with a family member. My brother-in-law uh, had a house, had a bunch of equity in the property. 
he had a tenant that was getting ready to move out and the tenant and kind of trashed the place. Yeah. Um, my wife um, suggested, Hey, why don't you talk to my brother and see if he'd be interested in working with us? And I just approached him. I said, Hey, I got the money. You, you know, your sister and I are going to do this one way or another. If you yeah. want to work together on this one, you bring the house, I'll bring the money. We'll work on it together. And then, you know, we'll see what happens. And that one went really well. Cool. And I can remember having a contact, uh, a conversation with my contractor at the end of, the that project being done and when the remodel was done and we're getting ready to list it and he goes well, what are you going to do next and i was like i don't know what i'm going to do next that's <laughs> a really good question and i was like i got to figure out how to find another one of these things and that's when i really started teaching myself about how to find off-market deals right. and marketing for for discounted properties and talking to motivated sellers and i basically um spent all my time doing that Right. And, uh, you know, trying and practicing different things, banded signs and direct mail and door knocking and just different things like driving that. And then I just and, yeah. driving for the, just all the things that, you know, all the, those things work. It's just a matter of going out there and doing it. And, uh, again, you know, it took some time. It took about six months between that first house to the second one. Ah. And there was some, there was some lean times and there was yeah. some kind of worrisome, like, Hey, you know, is this, did I just get really lucky or, and is this it, or am I going to be able to do it again? And, found another one. And then, you know, um, we just try to repeat that process over and over again. Yeah. So you had a couple of things there I want to peel out. Uh, one of the ones that I believe, and I think it's actually my number one core belief that I've, I've shared in my book or whatever I send out is getting, we both are men. So it's obviously yeah. our wives, right? Having your wife 100% behind sure, you. Absolutely. Not yeah. the, oh yeah, honey, it's cute. Go, go do nice things right now. That yeah. could be a husband or a wife. I'm not trying to be, you know, gender. I'm trying to be gender neutral. Right? Yeah. The ability to have who's, who's ever more motivated have 100% unquestioned support from that significant other or don't get started. Right? And, and, and so just to piggyback off that, I mean, when we first started, I mean, we put everything on the line. I mean, I borrowed uh, all of the money against my retirement account that I could. We took a second mortgage out on our house. We maxed out every single credit card that we had. We did a cash advance on anything that we, and that, and that's what we did. And I mean, it was, I, we would not have been able to do it at the beginning if my wife wasn't a hundred percent on board with it. And there was, you know, and you know, credit to her, she had more faith in me than I think I had in myself sometimes because I didn't know what the hell I was. I literally was just figuring this stuff out and we would joke about that. She would tell me like, uh, you know, you can barely fix anything around this house. How are you going to take this house that looks like it's going to fall over and remodel it and then sell it to somebody? And I said, you know what? I don't know, but I'm smart enough to figure it out. And uh, <laughs> You're like, you know, honey, thankfully here's the me, key. I'm yeah. not doing it. I'm paying somebody. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to pay somebody that knows how to do it. That's exactly right. So, um, yeah, I was really lucky that she was there for me and she supported me. And, um, you know, would it would not have worked because we put so much on the line. And, and when, yeah. when I say that we borrowed everything, we had to do that over and over and over and over again until we were able to, I was able to build enough of a reputation and get enough of a track record where private investors and lenders out there would trust me enough to start funding those deals. So we had, well, we were basically taking all our chips and shoving them in yeah. all of the profits and just shoving them in and doubling down on everything that we, on everything that we had at the beginning. That, that's a huge lesson. Um, you know, I, I can only imagine what would happen to most relationships during that six month dry period. Yeah. Like you get success with your brother you cash a decent check, you split it up, you, you walk away with some money, you're feeling like, you know, I don't know, the Hulk or, or a king or whatever. Yeah. But then you, you just have to pay your dues, right? Everybody does. That's right. And your dues cost six months. I'm sure there were some interesting conversations. But once you've paid your dues, you only have to pay it once. Mm -hmm. And then the cycle starts going, right? And it starts to get easier. Once you get momentum, it's funny. Once you get some momentum and once you've done it, it start, it gets easier the longer that you've been in it and the, and you start attracting the money and you start attracting yes. the contractors and you start attracting all of the missing pieces that you're, you know, people get so hung up on at the beginning and they're trying to figure out how to do everything at the beginning. And I tell everybody, you just need to do step one, figure out step one yeah. until you're ready for step two. And then you do step two. And that's what I've always been good at. I haven't tried to have, a yeah. to Z figured out. It's just like, let me take this as far as I can get it. And then, yeah. you know, try to seek out help, uh, you know, and the stuff that I need help in uh, when I get to that point. Yeah. I think that's where your and my ex, you know, outside sales background really helps us. Yeah. It's like, okay, 
I'm going to get to first base. You don't go from home to second base. You have to go to first. And, you know, I I want to talk one more thing about this origin story. And that is uh, when, when I go out and talk, which is obviously something I like to do now. uh, And I just did an event in Fresno where I was talking to young hustlers, right? People 25 and younger. It was, um, if you have to do one thing to get chunk money, it's go get in front of sellers to figure out who's motivated or not. Right. That's right. Just get comfortable talking to people. I agree a hundred percent. And I think that again, talking about the sales experience, like once I figured out how the, the real estate transaction worked and I got comfortable with the jargon and comfortable talking to people, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the natural, the abilities really that, you know, you've been honing that I was honing for 14 or 15 years doing what I was doing. All of those natural instincts just then kicked in. Right. Because I, I had the confidence then. And I've just realized that sales is just a numbers game. So it's a, how many people can I talk to? And my, I'm not emotionally attached to the outcome. I believe that the process, if you believe yeah. in the process and you just do the process and get really good at the fundamentals, Amen. the outcome is going to take care of itself, yeah. right? And so those yeah. are the things I try to teach the people that work with me is that if you just do the simple things and yeah. you do them consistently and you do it over time, you're going to eventually get the result that you're looking for. Yeah, it's know? it's it's... Saying guaranteed is probably too strong a word, but it's damn near guaranteed, right? Whatever the numbers are, right? I, I use in my talk, hey, if you talk to 50, you know, owners, yeah, yeah. you're likely going to have five meetings and five meetings will lead to at least, you know, one. One contract, yeah. yeah at least an opportunity, right? And, you know, whatever. So uh, that's, so first off, if that scares you, talking to 50 people, congratulations, this business is not for you. Not you know really, now. Yeah right? You're out. Go do something else. Go play with cryptocurrency or something else. Uh, But if that excites you and you, and you can, the beauty of this is it doesn't have to take 50. It could happen on your eighth phone call, your 17th door knock, your third, you know, your whatever, but it will happen in that window. Uh, And that's just exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think one of the characteristics that I've seen that of all the people that I've been around that are successful in this business is that they just have the attitude of, I'm just going to do this until I get yeah. the result that I want. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm kind of, I'm like that too. I've always been like, that. I'm like a dog with a bone with these things. And once it, you know, once I just kind of set my sights on something, it's just, it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, just through the, you know, I'm just going to will it to happen sometimes is how I feel. Right. And so, awesome. you know, I think, uh, you know, for the new people, I think that's their biggest struggle. I think sometimes is just pulling the trigger and getting started. Mm-hmm. and not knowing, you know, maybe what the next step is, but realizing that, you know, it'll, it'll happen if you just take that first step with me. That's awesome. So we yeah. talked about where you are, sort of where you started. Let's, let's now change it up and talk about, you know, Jason in, in three to five years. Where, so you, sure. you, you're going to get to 25 come hella hot water this year. Where are you going to be yeah. in you think, three to five years? What do you hope's going on in your business? Um, well, I'd like, I, I, I'm getting ready to, to put my goals together for 2019. So, so here's kind of where I'm at with what, sure. what I have coming up in the short term future. I'd like to, I'd like to earn seven figures this next year. Um, I'd like to double my rental portfolio from 25 to 50. Ooh, two of um, okay. yeah, I'd like to, um, I'd like to continue to build out the team that I have and add, you know, a few more people uh, that are working under me under the real estate team. And and my eventual goal, I would say in the next three to five years is to have um, a fully integrated real estate company. So we have, um, you know, the buying, the fixing and the reselling. Um, I don't necessarily maybe want to manage other people's properties, but have internal property management maybe for my own. You don't want to do that. Trust me. That's I don't. Yeah. Right. Small margins, um, lots of headaches. Exactly. Bad, bad, and there's bad. other people that have already figured that out. I don't want to do that. Uh, um, I'll pay them all day long. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I like working with people and developing talent, right? So yeah. I'd like to build a team under me that can kind of duplicate what I'm doing right now and, and, and send people out and do more of maybe like a consultative approach where, yeah. hey, you know, not just buying at a discount, but maybe buying at a discount, listing it. Right. joint venturing with you, whatever, you know, um, lending money has also been something that's very interesting to me. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've done some small lending deals, uh, with people that I know and trust, uh, uh, over the last couple of years. And I see the value that I'm bringing to the people that, you know, lend money to me. Yep. And, uh, I feel that's, you know, as about as passive as you're going to get, I think, uh, you know, in, 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 in this real estate game or one of the more passive, um, right. ways to do it. So, 
I like to accumulate some cash and then get that cash just working and, and lending and then, uh, you know, see where the road takes me after that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pretend to be Jason just cause it's okay. my show. Sure. So three to five years from now, I imagine you and your wife having probably 200 units, right? So that's not 200 houses. That's 200 rental checks, 200 units, 200 doors. Yeah. 200 doors pretty easily. Um, I imagine uh, you are, you and your companies are easily um, earning that seven figure club uh, each yeah. year where I think you're going to take this a lot. Cause I just, it, it just oozes out of you. And I don't even know if you recognize it is you're going to start leading and mentoring um, multiple teams. Uh, I could see you sort of having teams of teams uh, that that's just where I see you going and having the most impact. Cause you are that kind of positive person, that Northern light. And I think, I think you attract, I think you just attract talent. Um, so that's where I think, I think you're going and should think about, I think you need to. And I, I like that. Yeah. And I agree, I agree with you a hundred percent. And I, and I think that you're absolutely right. And I think that's one of the things that's aligned with kind of just, you know, what I am so passionate about is just, you know, you know, taking the things that I've learned, downloading them into other people and yeah. seeing them grow and become successful. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, a you know, it's a great feeling to see oh, that, right. Awesome. And the impact that you have on them and then how that trickles down on their family. And so, um, you know, it's, I want, you know, just like anybody else, I want these things to happen. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? And, and I've learned that, you know, yeah. we only, it only happens at the pace that, you know, you're ready and capable to deal with at that time. Right. So I'm always yeah. trying to practice patience. I'm always trying to, yeah. you know, I'd love to be at your level now or have oh, even more now, but you know, I'd probably be curled up under my desk if, uh, you know, I had that much stuff to deal with right now. So oh, you're, you know, I'm you're, just trying to, you're going to fly by me in a heartbeat. I think next year is about systems for you. And then it's, it, you're going to be able to take the systems and procedures and, and I think you're going to, you're going to explode uh, as far no, as I appreciate that, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So, uh, I look forward to watching from afar and admiring your success. It's going to be fun. So this is, this is the part of the show where uh, I sort of turn it over to you. Uh, you can go ahead and, and, you know, if you want sort of share how people can contact you. You can outline if you want buyers, private money, sellers call you, right? You run a real estate sure. business, so sh share away. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, the, the best way to get in contact with me is, uh, social media right now, just to kind of engage and see kind of what I have going on. Um, Facebook is what I'm most active on. So if you go into Facebook and just search my name, Jason Pritchard, um, you'll see a lot of the stuff that I'm doing as far as my own investment, my personal investment company and the rentals and the flips that I have going on. Mm -hmm. uh, the Clayson Group is the name of the real estate team that, uh, that I uh, co-founded and am, am currently running. Um, and we have our own page there too. So you can take a look at that. Uh, I am always, I have right now, uh, I have, I'm in the position where I've got more deals than I have money. So, um, you know, anybody that's out there that's interested in lending and getting a good return on their money and not really having to do a whole lot of heavy lifting. Um, you know, I'd love to sit down and talk about that stuff as well. So, yeah. Yeah. I would, I would tell my, uh, the people watching this, if you, if you're, if you're sort of know you want to get in the real estate business and being a landlord is not for you. Um, I, I check out Jason, look, look at, look at what he's done, what he's, his track record is and look what he offers for private money. Have, have the conversation. You'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't at least have the conversation. So, so check them out. I think you'll be, uh, I think you'll be, you know, worst case you'll learn something. Uh, I think. Yeah. Be excited yeah. Though. So, all right, Jason, I appreciate you doing all this for me. Uh, this came out great. I'm really excited with what we've done. And uh, I guess I just want to say thank you and uh, have a great day. Thanks for your time.